Hey everybody, Alex here. Thanks for tuning in for a brand new episode of Two Weeks, One Shot, a tabletop RPG variety podcast. Season 2 continues today with episode 12 and our adventure in Burn Bright with guest GM Mike Daniel from 19 Hits the Dragon. When we last left our crew, they had accepted a quote-unquote pizza delivery and promised to achieve the delivery with quote-unquote light pepperonis in under quote-unquote 30 minutes. This pizza delivery metaphor will never get old. All right, let's get into the adventure. Previously on two weeks, one shot. A space station made out of the corpse of an ancient, long-dead omniscient. Golgi the Magnificent. We are Phil. We are a a Rornan. Uh, And that means, like, it's just a bunch of little bugs. Gertank, the the cat-like Eno. Triage 9, who is a peacecraft which means that he uh, ironically was built for war, but he doesn't do that anymore, and that's why they call themselves Peacecraft now. I'm Jerry Slugs. Uh, I'm a Z-Voy, which is, uh, I'm like, I'm a slug. I'm a slug. That's that's the short and long of it. I'm a white slug. I'm wearing a a cool jacket, and uh, I'm wearing some sunglasses, because why not? I heard you were the guys to talk about, about getting a pizza. I have a need for a special delivery back here to to Kolki. There is a glean that has contacted myself and and some friends here and is uh, requesting pickup and, um, you know, some other favors. He also has some information about the remains of Optum Primus. Let's get to uh, the simple. The what now? The, The ship, man. Our ship. Our ship. We have a ship. Hello! Welcome back to the ship, crew. Yeah, you, you guys have, uh, you all have quite a bit of time. It's, again, as I said, even traveling at faster than light speed to take some time um, tracking across the galaxy. It actually takes about the equivalent of oh, almost a month, about 25 plus days to uh, to get to the system that you're heading to. So you've got Damn. quite a bit of time. It's a lot of Korean drama to get through. <laughs> but we can uh, just kind of fast track through all of that. Uh, no need to spend too much time on the day-to-day travel because it's not important. That's for the Patreon. Yeah, yeah, yeah guys, if you want, <laughs> to hear what our day-to-day travel sounds like on this ship just subscribe to patreon.com donate to someone anyone (laughs) it'll find you yeah Donate up to 20000 a month, and Mike will be your DM, too. Yeah. You'll yeah. come Actually, up, he'll, he'll bring yeah, pizza. I, I would totally do that. Yeah. I'll bring an yeah. actual pizza, not a, you know. All right, now that we have that recorded, we will stipulate that uh, nobody said you're getting any of that <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so no, just, no, You know, no. that's fine. If it, if it benefits you guys. It's just it's, that if they donate yeah. it. That's right. It's it's just one of the perks that they get, uh-huh. and then we'll work something out yeah. with you, Mike. Yeah, you know, this is this is all exposure after all. <laughs> Mike gets the pizza. He gets his own pizza. That's his favorite. Yeah, no, I, I, I said I would bring a pizza. I didn't say that I'd be giving it out then. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I bring the pizza and just eat the whole thing. <laughs> the pizza is for the ambience. The ambience? Oh. Yeah, it's just set the- an ambient pizza. Yeah, it's a conversation starter and stopper. Wait, who said ambient on the pizza? Yeah, yeah. Well, ambient on the pizza. After this campaign, that would like, explain <laughs> hey, a lot hey. about how this adventure is going so far. Oh, that's on the restricted menu under four am I enemies. That's uh, patreon.com slash juicecast, TWOS cast. None of that is in the episode. <laughs> <laughs> so after many, many days of travel, as you all are getting close to Sucap, your initial destination. Your friendly MI chimes in. 
Hey, uh, guys, we've got a message from someone on the planet. Should I patch them through? Does it seem like it's a spam call? Or, or do they seem like they're legitimate? Is it about the warranty on the ship? Yeah, do you have caller ID? Is that a thing with you? Does it seem like it's from a random Midwest town? It seems to be coming directly from Sukat. Wait, wait, real quick. We have your warranty up to date, right? This isn't yeah. one of those. Oh, yes, my warranty is far from expired. It's wonderful that we're so responsible, isn't it? It's good, it's good that we're doing that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you guys are good uh, ship owners, I'd say. Really? You, you think so? It's nice to hear you say that. It's nice. It's nice when the ship, you know, compliments you. It's lovely. Even you, Jerry, do a good job of taking care of me. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Yeah, you're all right, I guess. You're all right. Yeah, put them up on screen. Let's see what we're. Let's see who's calling us. There is a flash on the vid screen and in the room that you guys are all hanging out in, and on the screen is a kind of a close-up image of a a glean. A, now, and glean are kind of like almost like a jellyfish type alien creatures they they have sort of a like a dome shaped body with some tentacles hanging down from their bottom um they have also gems embedded in their foreheads and big like colorful eyes this one's eyeball or not just eyes but his his body is mostly pink with some like purple thrown in there as well his purple dots his eyeballs are solid purple um, and he's got a like a hot pink gem embedded into uh, into his forehead. I see. He says, uh, "Yes, this is this <laughs> the, uh, the occupants of the free ship Thumple that I'm speaking with?" I, I don't worry, guys. I, I have this one. After all, I am the ship's counselor. Yes, <laughs> this is the ship free Thimple. Uh, uh. hi. How are you? You're doing great. I know. Well, I'll be doing much better when I'm not hurtling through space towards the burn. Oh, honey, believe me, I totally understand. I, we all are in similar positions one way or another. Uh, now that I have you here, though, I, I was wondering if perhaps you would be w- aware of, of, a, of, a, of a giant peacecraft uh, person who recently uh, deceased? Uh, somewhere there on the planet surface? What? I know where she is. She's not on the planet's surface, though. Oh, you, you do? Oh. It, is, it will be a further trip. You must first come and pick me up, and then I can navigate you there. Oh, oh. You, you, want, you want to come with us to a second location? That's a bit of a red flag, isn't it? Look, this hmm. is the agreement that I had with the Morton Syndicate. They would pick me up, and on return, they get Optimus. Yep, nope. Uh, uh, Optim Primus <laughs> remains. That name is uh, a little too close to being trademarked. Oh, our copyright alarm just went off. <laughs> woo, woo. There's a little flashing sign on a triage nine's head. Oh man, we just lost five. <laughs> yeah, we just lost five thousand argent. Shit. Gertank, would you be so kind as to mute our end of this call for a moment? Oh, absolutely. Oh, oh sorry, it's the wrong mute button. Oh, it's, it's so hard when you're on the on the Zoom calls with this the mute digital, button. Excuse me, it's such a yeah, pain. I just almost pulled a put pulled a bit of a tube and <laughs> excuse me. Uh. That's right. It's I, I pulled a tube in. It's 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 still the COVID era. You guys remember tube in, right? <laughs> He, he masturbated on a Zoom call. That's what that reference is. <laughs> Thank you for that clarification. Jeremy Tubin. He works for the New York Times. I didn't, I didn't know I it was. I absolutely had no idea what that reference was. <laughs> Look it up, guys. It's a I good did, one. It's did a good not joke. You could begin to understand. Harold, for that, give me a uh, give me a computer's check to see if you can figure out how to actually mute yourself. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. Actually, uh, Triage 9 will just go for it himself. Okay. No, no, no. No, no. I got this. I got no, you're this. T- Taking too long and talking about masturbating. I rolled a one. <laughs> That's not how this works. So what's the complexity on so, this? So this will just be a complexity of two. So baseline complexity. Okay, let me roll my. I have I have a D four in computers. Oh my god. Let me roll my two D four. Double, double, double. Two D four. What? I got a four and a two. Okay. Hey, it's not a double. No doubles. You do find the mute button very easily and click on it, and uh, you see the symbol of the microphone with the slash through it on the edge of the screen. It's universal. <laughs> Wonderful. Correct me if I'm wrong, shipmates, but we do not currently work for a Mortem Syndicate, do we? No, no, we got the job from Beppis. I don't think he mentioned uh, 
His name was Pepys, right? Uh, Close we didn't write this down, did we? I don't <laughs> think he mentioned uh, a Morton syndicate. I never trusted jellyfish. It's one of my space racism. The ship's counselor, everyone. You're such a fleshed out character, Gertie. It's so amazing. <laughs> it's, it's a fault I have, really. It's a kind of fault. One or two things you can say about Gertie. Oh, he's horny and he's racist, whatever. Towards space jellyfish. Horny? I just saw one in the pants. Yeah, he didn't tell you guys. Y'all didn't ask any questions either, so, you know. <laughs> no, that's true, oh, man. <laughs> Mike, if you ever come back to DM for us again, you'll find that that's a running issue. Yeah. Hoisted by our own petard again. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Damn it. What did you call me? I do listen to the show, guys. So, um. Oh, no. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> so, I, as far as our characters know, the Mortem Syndicate had nothing to do. We were just hired by, like, one dude who told us about this. You weren't told, but he did indicate that he was working with some other folks. That's true. Okay, that's now true. that said, can we also take this moment while mm -hmm. the computer's muted yep. for someone to roll something to see if that name is familiar? Yeah, absolutely. The Mortem, because if they're a syndicate, I can make some assumptions, but I feel like maybe someone could tell us a little more about that situation. We can do skullduggery to know my criminal underworld. Y you could. Could do that again. If someone wants to use another skill that you might know, uh, I have streetwise. Streetwise, yeah, yeah, streetwise would one. be good. Or... I was gonna bring up as uh, related to figuring out like what we're rolling and who's rolling. Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, but there is something that is worthwhile for us to be using these different skills and tracking our use of them. Correct. There's a system in Burnbright. I kind of like it. it. It really like rewards you for doing things that you're maybe not always good at. Oh yeah, tell us about that. Absolutely, yeah. So thank you for bringing that up, Brian. So basically, Burn Bright encourages you, like you said, to use all of these different types of dice. Um, as we kind of mentioned earlier, with skills, it's not like you have a certain number of points in a certain skill and you're rolling a die and adding your, your points. That's not how this works. You have different types of die that are put into these different skills that you have so that you're better with certain skills and not as great with some of them. And when you make a check with any of your skills, you roll multiples of those dice. So it could be 2d4, 2d6, however many. And the complexity is how many of those dice that you're rolling. So when Brian asked what the complexity was, sorry, when Triage 9 asked what the complexity was to mute the video call it's pretty simple so it's a complexity of two means it's easy to to do even if you're unskilled in that skill so he rolled his 2d4 and he did not roll doubles so he succeeded you only fail a skill check when you are rolling multiple dice and you get two or more of the same number Got it. And then the reward, I believe, for using the different kinds of dice is if we use one of each kind, we get something. You get what's called a Nova point, kind of like a story point. You can spend those to do certain abilities, things like that. But yeah, as you are rolling the different types of die, you are kind of adding up. And once you've used all of the different types of die, you get one Nova point. Very cool. Yeah, I can I can roll streetwise for this. I have a D6 sure. in it. So this is the Mortem Syndicate. I'm going to say this is a complexity of three. So go ahead and roll me three dice. And you want to not see any doubles. Hey, it's one, two, and three. Nice. Uh, yeah, so that's a, that's a success. No doubles there. So with your streetwise, you've definitely picked up some knowledge, especially with the time that you spent on Golgi the Magnificent. You heard a little bit about the Mortem Syndicate, and I think you as a Zavoy probably have some special interest in them because what the Mortem Syndicate are really interested in is the art or craft, we might say, of necromancy. Damn. And you as a Zavoy have some kind of leanings towards that, yep. making use yep. of some bodies or yourself yep. but in a little bit of a different way so yeah yeah so what do you do with the bodies jerry i've always wondered yeah what does that mean where do they go what is it that you're doing to them well you've seen me i get into the dead body i pilot it i'm like a, it's like my own personal mech it's a oh, oh like the man made of bees going into the robot isn't weird already okay i just do it with dead bodies <laughs> I didn't know about this at all. This is this is weird. Yeah, you, you know, I yeah. Sorry to tell you, last week when you went on a date with that other Eno, uh, she smelled kind of weird. That was actually me. But we'll get back to that later. That's for another counseling <laughs> session. Uh, Jerry, I I had no idea. Look, by the way, you're 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 I, a space Tinder profile. Lots of red flags, buddy. I was just trying to kind of. 
help you out there, <laughs> but Jesus. Space Dirt? I, I was going to say, Jesus. I... <laughs> Space Jesus, sorry. Yeah. Gary, I, I had no idea, and I have to say, our, our date was wonderful. It was eye-opening. And you know, Gert Tank, I had a really good time too. <laughs> but that's that's uh, we'll we'll talk about that next 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 space uh, yes, adventure. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're working. Yeah, we're, we're just working. have to live with that sexual tension between us. God. Uh, look, the Mortem Syndicate. I've heard of these guys in my dealings with dead bodies. They are uh, very interested in necromancy, but mainly they are after certain technology, certain arts. So yeah, it's it's possible that right Beppis was involved with the Morton Syndicate. I don't think I don't think that needs to raise a huge red flag. He did ask you specifically specifically to bring the remains of a creature or peacecraft back. So it would track. He is looking for a body. Yeah, it's like a dead robotic body. Well, it seems like we're all in agreement that we're not being screwed. Shall I turn the mic back on and acquiesce to this strange little fish person? Yeah, he's been muted for like 20 minutes. Let's see if he's still alive. He's like checking his watch, <laughs> space watch on the thing. I, I hit uh, shift command. Uh, a, I believe. And oh I, man, we're we're running our ship on Mac. God, oh, no wonder no. it's got so many problems. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course, it's a, it's a 2015 refurbished. It's the technology of the future. Right? I've told so. you before, Gertank. You can just use the user interface. You don't need to enter command lines. No, it's better this way. It's better this way. I know all the hotkeys. <laughs> that explains all the dongles I have to use just to keep this piece of junk until it's put together. <laughs> Jesus, I thought that's what you used for the bidet. <laughs> well, that was your dongle. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Fish Jellyman. Uh, I, yes, I believe we are here to work with the syndicate that you did speak of. Oh, good, good. Yes, yes, I do believe we are ready to procure you at your location. Shall we make a, an, a landing, perhaps? Yes, it, it is important to be very discreet as you were landing. You see, there are no ships off-world from Sukap right now, and well, I think everyone that's here would probably kill for a chance to get off of the planet. Oh, I see, I see. So we should perhaps fire at the at the ground a bit and kill off any of the locals before we land, perhaps. I would appreciate if you didn't uh, oh, maybe okay. do oh, that and right. accidentally kill me as well. Oh, that's, that's a good point, I suppose. That's just... Indiscriminate bombardment of a civilized and inhabited planet is also considered a war crime, Gertank. Depends who's asking. I wouldn't consider this place civil, exactly. They did say light pepperoni. Right! It's a whole planet without any phones. How would anyone know? <laughs> <laughs> we are limited on technological resources, but um, the inhabitants have kind of banded together under a driftling Nogora who has created something of a maybe a, a gang or almost more of a cult really a government good for them good for them like what you're saying is that there's a small community that could maybe support like a pizza shop they don't really have much money that they would spend but I'm sure that food would be welcome so, it's a socialist planet? Yeah, it's a bummer. Well, where should we, uh, you know, set this set this thing down uh, so we can, you know, get you on board? Did we buy the cloaking package? I don't believe we did. No, no, we didn't. Oh, uh, gym. We bought, we bought that portable gym. <laughs> that was pretty worth it. My glutes are looking amazing. <laughs> I did bring my portable gym. He'll send over some <laughs> coordinates, but he will warn you that they are probably watching the skies. Nagora likes to stand in a clearing and gaze into the sky, but at the burn as well. Which I should also mention, as you guys are coming up on Sukap here, the burn is quite present, quite close to all of you as well. A wall, light years tall and as far as you can see uh, in any direction, a wall of burning, swirling miasma of energy that is kind of undulating, not too far, and it's very clear to see that Sukap is heading right towards it. Oh man, it's like looking into a into a microwave with the door open. Space Jesus. Uh, <laughs> speaking of, 
don't use the microwave. It's uh, out of commission. <laughs> Jerry, I think that you will also require a medical hookup after we are done with everything that we're accomplishing here. Yeah, I've been trying to use the microwave. I'm pretty fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> what happens if you microwave a slug? I'm just wondering. Same thing that happens when you microwave everything else? These are the questions we ask on Two's Cast. What happens if you microwave a slug? <laughs> Google.com. Is this the reference to Storm from uh, the first X-Men movie? Yes, that's exactly exactly what that was, Brian. Thank you for getting it. Yep. That was good. Hold on, hold on. Do you want to hear the results that come up? What happens if you microwave a slug? The first result just adds UK. Okay. <laughs> the second result says down the toilet. <laughs> that was weird. The other one says in half. And the, uh, the last one's just uh, plural slugs. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to search that. I'm not going to actually press enter, but it's <laughs> interesting what people are looking up. I think we all appreciate that. And so does your Google search history. So. Yeah. Yeah. And my FBI agent. <laughs> Yes, you're a personal one. We've all yeah, got a yeah. personal FBI agent, right? So, oh yeah. <laughs> Hope you guys are enjoying the show. Mine's in the DEA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I like to imagine mine's a fisherman. <laughs> all right, so so we're bringing the ship down, just aware of the fact that probably we will be spotted on our way. We flip on the little switch that turns the little magnetic pizza logo on the top. The light turns on. Yeah, it lights up and starts <laughs> spinning, so everyone knows. Uh, uh. All right, so so not incognito. Got it. Yeah, so it, it sounds uh, kind of like Phil would be the one to kind of pilot things down. It might yep. this might take a little bit of actual finesse to get there. So, okay. um, how are you going about you know finding the spot and and landing and all of that? All right, so he he sent us a spot, correct? He gave you guys some uh, some coordinates that are on the edge of town or whatever passes for a town here. All right. Phil would, uh, knowing that we kind of have to be stealthy, but if we do get caught, he did flip on that light to be, so he can try to bluff his way through that we're just here to deliver you pizza. He's going to use his stealth skill to try to just come down, you know, lower than, you know, they might expect. Is there a system in Burn Bright to assist in roles in any way? Is that something? Right. If we're all piloting the ship together as a crew, is there... We well, do. no, no. All, I'm like, maybe I can do something to the engine mm -hmm. to try and help with this stealth entry, right? Basically, what, what you can do is you will, in order to assist, you end up lowering the complexity of the role. I was going to say this is going to be a complexity of four, but if you want to help out with some engineering skills of some sort. Yeah, yeah. I'd say uh, Jerry's going to go over to the engine room. He's going to uh, he's going to kind of mess with the thrust and fuel levels that are are going into it and put us into a, a low burn so it reduces the amount of noise that the engine makes as it enters atmosphere. Nice. Yeah, let me... I actually need to brush up real quick on how the... On engine mechanics? Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, anyway, Phil, you were going to make a, a stealth check. Yeah. So with Jerry assisting you, this is going to bring the complexity down to a complexity of three. All right. So whatever type of dice you got with stealth, roll three of those bad boys there. I got your back. You got D10s and we rolled no doubles. Okay, great. So with the engines quieting down, you are able to kind of navigate your way around the planet in such a way that you feel pretty confident that no one was going to be able to see you based on where you were told people are at and where y'all are headed. Tight. And you are able to gently glide your spaceship down through the atmosphere of the planet and land. And like I said, it's a jungle planet. So you find an open space, but a space that's going to have a bunch of like tree cover protecting from any onlookers as well and settle the ship down. And when you all disembark, there is a kind of jungle fauna or flora, I should say, around a bunch of strange purple trees and you know blue flowers and stuff all, all kinds of strange things uh, growing on this planet here. you know since we're all different aliens from different planets would we find purple plants and green flowers strange or would that just be be normal it's probably pretty normal to you guys right mm -hmm. no Harold the people who we want to appreciate this medium and entertainment platform that we're putting together well <laughs> they would find it strange Harold no they could see it from our perspective that it's totally fine and normal to have a planet with purple flowers and things like that it's totally normal 
Totally normal. Yeah, pink grass and blue uh, dirt and yeah. 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 It's nearly boring. I've seen five planets like this this <laughs> month or later. Yeah, it's it's when the grass isn't pink that you should be worried. Yeah. Right, right. Green grass, what? Oh, right. <laughs> That's dangerous. Get out of there. Strange. <laughs> Something strange. So we're landed. We are in sort of this jungle climate terrain. And we've been informed that there are like potentially hostile people around. Is there any way, can I like use, would our ship have any sort of sensors on it? Or if not that, just sort of being the first one out the gangplank as we're landing to take a look around to see if there's any apparent threats or anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. You can you can do anything that you would like. I would like to do that. Then. <laughs> what type of skill would you want to roll and how are you going to do it? I imagine that would fall under perception. Okay, sure. Just triage nine, like looking around and paying attention to in the ship, are there any sensors going off? As he's looking out of portholes, does he notice? any potential dangers or any like signs of movement anything like that sure so go ahead and make a perception check that'll be a complexity of two i think just okay. to kind of scan the area to just take a look around mm -hmm. all right i rolled a three and a seven so we're good that was a success you fire up the ship's sensors and you do catch a ping of the form of a glean that is heading your way um, not too far shoot it shoot it shoot it <laughs> beyond that it's it's kind of far away but there are some other life forms out there there's probably about maybe five or so creatures out there but they're not exactly close sort of all condensed together as well maybe in some sort of you know they're collected in a group essentially but they're a little bit further away creation nine relays this it appears that the customer is headed our way as for any other signs of contact they seem more distant i think that we will be able to make this pick up quite successfully oh that's lovely i wasn't really looking forward to killing all the locals yeah you were you <laughs> big joker you're yeah. sure right sure. you know me so well <laughs> yeah Harry. you told me all about it on our date last weekend. Uh, <laughs> maybe we should do that for our third date. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Triash, as you are looking over these pings, you notice as well there is some sort of creature between you all and the Glean that sort of was hidden from the sensors for a split second as you were looking around. But as you're like, oh, the guy's on the way, suddenly there's this other thing there in between you. Some strange readings coming off of it. Shoot it, shoot it, shoot it! <laughs> I don't like to immediately reverse my earlier statement, but it does appear that there may be a, some sort of life form in between our customer and ourselves. We may need to go out and deal with this in a rather aggressive manner to secure the delivery status. I'm sure this other thing on the sensors is absolutely nothing to worry about. Every adventure we've ever done has gone off completely successfully without any trouble whatsoever. So let's do a few announcements here. Brian recently participated in a fundraiser on Bard Rock Cafe's stream, benefiting their friend and part-time editor's family. It was a really great time for a really great cause. Check the show notes for a link to the VOD over on Bard Rock Cafe's Twitch channel. Brian also guested on a surprise adventure over at Game Night Heroes, which will premiere at a later date. Keep an eye on our Twitter for more info. Okay, got some Two's Cast housekeeping to do. Sometimes when you're sitting at the helm and prepping your route to travel through space at faster than light speed, chatting it up with your magical intelligence, you get a little tired of talking to your magical intelligence. So then there's no better time to catch up on that reading list you've been putting aside by listening to the books you've been meaning to read. That's why we've partnered with Audible to give you a 30-day free trial by visiting audibletrial.com slash twoscast. That's T-W-O-S cast. It's a great way to support the show, and it's a great way for you to catch up on some of the books you've been meaning to catch up on. So next time your magical intelligence chimes in with its weird Christopher Walken-like voice, you can just hit the mute button and turn on Count Zero by William Gibson. It's the second book in the Sprawl trilogy because you've already heard the first one, Neuromancer, and it's fantastic. So head on over to audibletrial.com slash twoscast, that's T-W-O-S cast, and sign up for your 30-day free trial of Audible and catch up on all that reading you've been meaning to do by listening to it.
Do you have a product or website that you'd like to promote? Drop us a line over at twoscastmail at gmail.com to discuss our ad spots and pricing. We'd love to feature your audio trailer or even read some ad copy for you. Thanks again to Mike Daniel from 19 Hits the Dragon for guest GMing this adventure for us. Personally, I've been dying to do a sci-fi space adventure type thing, so this whole game was so much fun for me, if you can't tell. 19 Hits the Dragon is a fantastic interview show where Mike connects with a variety of guests in the TTRPG scene to talk about games, mechanics, insights, and general advice for people looking to learn more about TTRPGs and how to run them. Be sure to check out 19 Hits the Dragon wherever you listen to podcasts, and stick around to the end of the mid-roll to hear a preview of his show. Thank you to Roll Music for providing our awesome intro song titled The River, and to the contributors at freesound.org for some of the sound effects and ambient noises you're hearing throughout the episode. Be sure to check the show notes for more info and links to all the music in the episode. If you'd like to support the show, you can visit patreon.com slash twoscast, that's T-W-O-S cast, and sign up for just $2 a month. Every new member goes a long way towards helping us keep producing this show. For more of us here at Twoscast, check us out on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Just search Twoscast, that's T-W-O-S cast, and use hashtag Twoscast to say hello. To hear the show, head over to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Google Podcasts, YouTube. We're on Audible now. We're on iHeartRadio. We're on Player FM. We're on Podchaser. We're all over the place. Just search two weeks, one shot, and guaranteed somewhere you're going to find us. If you're listening on Spotify or Podbean, follow us to be notified when episodes come out. And hey, while you're at it, Go ahead and rate our podcast on Spotify, and you can also leave us a review with a generous rating on Apple Podcasts. We don't advertise the show at all right now, so positive ratings and word of mouth are our most powerful tools to help the show grow. Any and all support is greatly appreciated. We may or may not have a Tuesday Talks this coming Tuesday, September 6th, because I will just have gotten home from a trip and will probably be pretty tired. We'll, we'll see if I'm up for it. We'll see. On Tuesday, September 13th, though, we're jumping back into our space adventure in Burn Bright, and believe me, it only gets weirder from here on out. Hello, this is Mike Daniel, host of 19 Hits the Dragon, the bi-weekly podcast where I interview creators from the tabletop RPG community and get answers to the long-awaited questions like, um, how are you so talented? Where do you get all of your ideas and how can I do that for myself? Please? Deal with situations like, or have you ever seen a giant earthworm? Those things are terrifying. Cover hot takes. Know the rules, but know that they can be broken. And especially if it just makes it way cooler and more fun and break them. And of course, hi- highest level of professionalism here on 19 Hits the Dragon, as always. So just search 19 Hits the Dragon on your podcast platform of choice and then go out and tell 19 of your closest friends. And we'll see y'all there. Bye bye. All right, let's get back to this completely non-violent sci-fi adventure where we don't attack anything at all, ever. All right, I'm locked and loaded. Jerry's got his, his laser pistol in one hand, laser rifle in the other. I'm ready to go, boss. Let's do this. <laughs> perhaps it's a, some local dog or perhaps a, a lost prostitute out in the woods who needs a place to stay. <laughs> it's totally fine. We don't we don't have to go directly to violence, I'm sure. If we yeah, must, I'll have my myself at ready as well, and I'll pull out my weapons. I got a, what I got? I got a, I got a, I got a who, who am I? Um, I got a laser sword. Laser sword. Yeah, that's right. It's... it's <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, I must be on that. I went to Disney World. I did mention that we may perhaps need to move aggressively. I too would like to resolve this peacefully, if at all possible. Peacefully with bullets. <laughs> Am I right? No, no, no. Peacefully without bullets. No, with laser swords. <laughs> Aggressive negotiations. Jerry, I will remind you that I have already refrained from citing you to the authorities on at least several occasions. Yeah, thanks a lot, buddy. <laughs> uh, you enable me. Yeah, how about how about you, Bugman? You staying in the ship? You coming down with us? You want to, like, 
bring your legs and the rest of you stays in? How do you want to do this? <laughs> No, Phil, uh, you see his laser pistol just forms out of his arm and into where it can be his hand. And, uh, uh, yeah, hey, let's, let's go. Let's shoot some people. Yeah, let's fucking party. Let's do it. All right. And I'm, I'm going to press the button to open the the thing that comes down that lets us have the gangplank. No, that's not <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, sure. The gangplank. <laughs> yeah, the gangplank lowers and y'all go out into the jungle. <laughs> and as soon as you actually get maybe 10... 15 feet away from the ship, you do hear kind of a startled noise that sounds very much like the Glean shouting, like, Oh, help. Oh, oh. oh no, those are the sounds of a jellyfish screaming. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds as though our customer is in distress. Perhaps we should render aid. It doesn't say anything about if he dies, we don't get the money, right? We just need to bring back the dead body. Well, we just need to find out where uh, uh, the Primus, Primus Optimus uh, nope. is, right? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> that is different enough. <laughs> We just need to find out where the corpse is. There you go. Yeah, he he only needs to have light pepperoni. Mm. So, all right. I'm still losing track of what all these pizza metaphors mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, look, anchovies means we're kidnapping. Mushrooms means we're bringing mushrooms. Uh, that's that's <laughs> I all love I that got. Bit. I love that bit. That was fantastic. Stuffed crust. Are we going to start <laughs> shooting or? So you guys hear, hear some screaming coming from the bushes and the trees. I mean, triage is definitely moving towards the sounds of distress at a pretty quick pace. Yeah, we're moving forward. Okay. Everybody else coming along as well then, I take it? Or? Bringing up the rear. Yes. Okay. Cool. Someone give me some sort of check to make your way through the forest here. Uh, triage, you're up front. So how are you going about getting there? Are you just hauling ass? Are you trying to like navigate your way through? Like, what are you doing? I think I'm going to just athletics is probably what triage is going with as the skill of just sort of like bounding forward as quickly as you can on very long, but somewhat slow metal legs. Yeah. So you're, you're a big guy and these are just plants that are in your way. You've got to bead on the direction you need to go. I think this is only a complexity of two. Okay. Uh, six and a one. Hooray. Nice. So, yeah, you hustle along and break apart the tree cover and, and underbrush between you and, and the sounds of distress and leave a nice path for everybody else to follow along. Um, and about a minute later, you come to a kind of small clearing and you do see this, this glean, this pink jellyfish guy that's kind of floating there. But in front of him is a laser beast. Laser beast. And I say that name, it is actually quite descriptive of this creature. It kind of looks like a big cat, maybe like a size of like a lion or something. Pretty large. And it's got like kind of a kind of spiky mane. But the entirety of the being seems to be made of energy. Mm, and it is biting at and clawing at, swiping at your uh, your friend here, Tagora. Uh, and he's, oh, thank you all for coming. Help, help me get rid of this thing. No thank us yet. You're on your own with that one. That's what I appreciate in a customer, right? He, he's in an intense situation. He's got time for manners. You're <laughs> welcome, sir. We're coming. Don't worry. That's one dead jellyfish. I guess, <laughs> Yeah, so I think this is maybe a good time to go into initiative as there is kind of a potentially combat happening here. I don't know how you guys want to approach this, but there's certainly some sort of confrontation happening in front of all of you. So in burn break, we don't roll initiative or anything like that. Oh, thank God. Combat has phases. Phase one is the enemies declaring their action. And you all can see that this laser beast is getting ready to pounce at Tagora to slash it. I like the idea that the laser cat beast <laughs> declares its action and just goes meow <laughs> ah shit <laughs> it's attacking yeah it's uh meow <laughs> laser meow Laser it's, meow. Uh, yeah, exactly. Laser meow. Space meow. When you're editing, Alex, make sure to overlay all sorts of, like, sci-fi yeah, laser it's effects. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does kind of the cat thing where it crouches down like it's ready to pounce, and you all can tell. All right, so we have this laser cat is, uh, is planning to maul our guy to death who we need to tell us where to go, right? That's that's the situation. And we have an opportunity to come up with a plan of attack, right? Exactly, yeah. The way that combat works is the enemies declare their actions. You guys get a read on what they're trying to do. You see this laser beast is about to pounce on your friend here, we'll call him. And uh, you have a moment to plan and then act. There's no initiative order that is set. You guys get to decide what order people are taking their 
their turns in, and then we'll go from there. Okay. I, I think, right, priority one would probably be protecting or getting Tagora over there to safety, right? Because we need we need at least him slightly functional to get us to the body. Yeah. So maybe, and let me know if you're down for this Triage 9. Triage 9 can go in for an attack, and as Triage 9 fights the laser cat, maybe maybe Phil, you can buzz your way over to uh, Tagora and get him out. Okay. Or I mean, I could, I could try to slither my way over to him. I'm quite... Uh... Bit, I can jump over there and use my pantsless body. Oh, yeah, that's true. I can ride inside of Triage 9. That's always an option. It's true. Okay, well then, while that's happening, um, since I'm, I'm like, ranged capable, I can, like, climb up a tree and then, like, fire down at the cat. You can climb up on top of uh, the robot, man. Climb on the robot, man. Everyone climb on the robot. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you guys can all be hanging off of Triage 9 if you want to. I can also just go over and, like, rather than Phil writing in me, it doesn't have to be one of you guys. I could go over and get our guy, whose name I already forget, but our glean friend. All right, so you can go do that. Everyone else shoots. Yeah, I'll go up the tree, fire at it, see if I can get its attention, and then you go get... Uh, why do we need to be in a tree? Because <laughs> I don't want to be on the ground with the laser cat. He wants to climb a tree. Let the slug climb. <laughs> Let the slug live his dreams. <laughs> or fuck me, I'll go back in the ship and just hang out if you guys want. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants you, Jerry. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I'm getting that feeling. He wants to climb the tree because the leaves haven't fallen yet, so he can't just bury himself in the pile of fallen it's leaves. True. Yeah. <laughs> oh. What's with all the laser cats? <laughs> <laughs> That's all we can play. We're sued, Jerry. We're sued. That's all we can play of that. <laughs> fair use. Fair use. Great. Great. So it sounds like triage nine is maybe going yeah, first. Yeah, I'll move in first. Okay. And the very first thing I will do is as I'm moving in, I'd like to use my power skill to try and like run in. And you said that this laser beast is like pretty big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But triage nine is also pretty big. So I'd like to move in and just sort of like have him bodily slam into it and sort of heave it up with his arms and just throw it out of the way to try and get it a little bit away from uh, from our glean friend here. Okay, go and make a power roll. Since it's your first action in turn order, it's only going to be a complexity two. Okay, cool. Yeah, because in combat it starts at two and goes up with each action I take. Every action you take is higher complexity and you can keep taking actions until you fail. Interesting. All right, or cool. until you decide that you're done. All right, so yeah, the first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and roll power. Okay. Just sort of like plow through this laser beast and get it out of the way. Yeah, go for it. Uh, to get our green friend. I rolled a five and a seven, so that is a success. Nice. So you're trying to like push the laser beast out of the way, it sounds like. Kind of toss him. Almost grappling it, running in and just sort of like heaving it off to one side or behind me as I move to the glean. Yeah, you can definitely like interpose yourself in between the glean and the laser beast and with your power ability sort of shove him out of the way or your power skill, I should say. Anything else that you're trying to do on your turn? Yeah, so having done that, first off, now that I am presumably, if I can, I'd like to move into the same space as the glean. Okay. Uh, which will allow me to use one of my special abilities as a piece craft of combine, which is that if I move into a space with a size one or smaller will ally, I can allow them to climb inside of me, and they cannot be targeted by attacks while we are combined. Damn. Okay. So, having shoved the uh, beast out of the way, Triage 9 like sort of pulls up right in front of the glean uh, and announces, this has now become a combat zone. I recommend that you seek shelter. And his <laughs> cockpit like pops open on his chest. I would like you to give me some sort of social check on this. You can kind of decide what skill you're using, but you're trying to convince him to get inside. So, what are you, what are you doing? Yeah, I think I'll go with Hey, uh, on that, can I do my special ability? Could I do Eno Aid oh. and allow an ally to make a skill roll with an advantage of one to reduce the complexity? Yeah, certainly, if that's what you would like to do. Yeah, you can do that. I think so. I think I do. So that'll bring the complexity down from a three to a two for whichever skill you're you're trying to use here, Brian. There you go. Okay. I think probably presence makes the most sense of like just having this sort of overwhelming. He's this big, strong robot man who's offering safety here. Yeah, he's like, I'm here to protect you. Get inside. So yeah, go ahead and roll. So again, that'll be a complexity two since it's getting uh, reduced. All right. That is an eight and a four. So that's another success. You step in front of the glean here, Tagora, and your hatch opens up. And um, he's like, oh, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, what's the voice that I use for him? Shit. 
Uh, uh, yes, uh, <laughs> I will climb inside of you. Yes, and he will kind of float up into your uh, your body there, into your hatch. There's a tentacle monster inside of you, Brian. That's 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 fine. That's what we all want, right? It's it's not a <laughs> tentacle monster. It's like a jellyfish. Well, you know, I guess that I'm space races. So. It is allowing me to live out my one of my all time fantasies of being a 20 foot tall robot man with a with a jellyfish inside of me. <laughs> nice, a, a common fantasy. That's true. This is very gratifying for me emotionally uh, as, as a player of this game. He's had that on his vision board for years. Bucketless. Are you doing anything else on your turn? Yeah, if I can make one more check here, I imagine our, our Glean friend is probably either like a little bit scuffed up from this encounter mm-hmm. or very, you know, high octane levels and everything and we don't want him to be freaking out too much. Mm-hmm. So Triage 9 sort of announces through, I imagine, maybe like some sort of internal speaker system into the cockpit, just commenting that I detect that you have elevated stress levels. Please enjoy this serum to to calm yourself. And he is going to produce, using my medicine skill, just some sort of little cocktail of mild sedatives. Just releasing some calming gases into your cockpit. Yeah, just just to help <laughs> keep him from being like too freaked out as things continue here. Sure, yeah, go ahead and give me a, a medicine check. A complexity of four. This is my bread and butter with the, uh, the D12s here. This is my D12 skill. Uh, so let's hope that even with a complexity of four, this goes well. 12, 3, 9, 7. All nice. right, cool. That is a success. Nice. Excellent. Whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah. You release some, some sedative gas into your internal mechanism there, internal space. Into yourself. <laughs> and yeah, you can feel the the glean who was very like tense and frightened and is kind of relaxes and rests <laughs> against one of the seats that you've got in there. Excellent. That's all I'm going to do on my turn. And that does fill up all of my, I've used one die of every type. So I get a Nova point at this point. Yeah, you get a Nova point. So if you have any Nova abilities, you can use that on later turns to uh, to charge them. Yeah. Cool. So who was, who was going next after that? Go for it, Phil. Phil, if uh, this guy is cleared here that we want, he has serious doubts whether or not his laser pistol is effective against something that's called a laser beast. <laughs> so instead, he's going to use his athletic skill to toss a grenade over there <laughs> since the guy is clear now. Okay. Go ahead and make an athletics check. That's a complexity of two. Okay, here we go. This is my worst one. <laughs> you gotta get those D4s out of the way. Yep, yep. I gotta get the D4s out of the way. And what better way than a grenade? What, could <laughs> what go better wrong? than something that could quite literally go explosively wrong? <laughs> A three and a one. Nice. So you, you toss the grenade. How much damage does the grenade do? Uh, it says burst three. Mm, okay. So I think. Hang on. Should have looked up some of the uh, items beforehand. <laughs> that would be what a smart GM would do. He would know what everything does. Um, that's clearly not me. Um, can I just worry about the gear? It's never been any of us. Yeah. <laughs> You're in good company. Don't worry. All right. Now that you mention it, yeah, I don't know what any of my stuff does. It's okay. You just put that on Mike. You'll have to figure it out. Oh, Mike, hell. Jeez, I don't, I think I, I think I know what my stuff does, but, uh, my stuff isn't the most, uh, like, intensive. Uh, why do I have a Vintner's kit and what the hell is that do? <laughs> <laughs> That's for the weekends. <laughs> Harold, you did specifically choose to buy the Vintner skin last week. Do you not remember that? that? That was your choice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. That was me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's for Vintner. I like to think that the jellyfish was inside of Triage 9, and Triage 9 is like, do not fear the peace nozzle. It will make you feel peaceful. <laughs> the what? Just <laughs> a <laughs> <laughs> spray. Little spritz. No shit. <laughs> yeah, he should have rolled like a constitution to see if he accidentally like spritzes himself. Maybe. You know? Well, that's what the uh, that's what the check was for. Triage yeah. Nine always okay. feels peaceful. That's a secret. It's like the reverse of the Hulk in Avengers. <laughs> that's my secret. I'm chill. <laughs> that's my secret, Gur. I'm never angry. Also, I mean, the fact that Triage has like a, a chair inside of him yeah. at all times is kind of interesting. He actually has. You guys would know he has multiple cockpits built in. Multiple cockpits. It's just that he usually only has the one that's functional they all have little beanbag chairs for you to sit on mm-hmm. right it's very comfy Did, do we talk do you think we talk about this as a crew like who gets what cockpit <laughs> who gets to ride them where yeah, if and uh, when uh, the time comes we'll we'll get to decide that i'm really hopeful that that, that will come to pass in this one shot uh, there's there's a compartment in there where jerry has scratched into the wall jerry's jerry's <laughs> place do not exactly no, exactly no girls allowed yep, yep. <laughs> 
I got my little uh, snack pack in there, little 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 bag I have. You know, I never t- take out any trash. There's like a bunch of like yerba mates <laughs> and Starbucks cups in there. <laughs> the vintner's kit is in there. <laughs> yeah. So the grenades, basically, unless it says otherwise, every weapon does one point of damage. The burst three is like an area of effect, oh, so okay. it does a burst in three squares from where you dropped it. Me having thrown this laser beast away, it is. I am far enough away that I'm not getting blown up by the grenade too, right? Well, yeah, I, and <laughs> okay. I think with the successful <laughs> roll, you can kind of drop it on the like behind the beast essentially so that it explodes and gets the beast in that radius but doesn't explode big enough to hit your friend as well if you had failed maybe who knows what would have happened but yeah you've done you've done a little bit of damage to this uh this laser beast here nice are you doing anything else with your your turn phil phil will begin to regroup with triage okay so you're just gonna move over there to where triage is right now sure yeah. you can move once freely on your turn without making any sort of checks Anything else that you're trying to do, or is that the end of your turn? I don't know that there is anything else that I can do. Uh, and I'm scared to shoot the laser thing with a laser, so... So then, I guess, uh, Jerry would be up? Yeah, yeah, I think seeing that the, uh, Tagora is now safe inside of Triage 9, mm-hmm. right? I'd assume the plan is we're getting him back to the ship and then GTFO out of here, right? I think Jerry's gonna head for the ship and prep the engine. Okay. So you're definitely further away than you'd be able to make on yeah, 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 one for sure, turn for sure. with your free movement. Yeah, yeah. So are you just kind of like dashing over there? I think I'm going to dash back to the ship. I know I said it sarcastically, I'll go back to the ship, but I think <laughs> I'm going to go back to the ship. Okay, so you can you can move beyond that if you want to try and get all the way there. It'll probably take a couple of checks. What skills would you like to use to... Can I argue for the sake of, right, the moment, right, the job's on the line, I'm going to try and use physical power, right? I'm going to push myself to get all the way over there? Absolutely. Okay, and what's the difficulty of the check? So it's your first check, so that's a difficulty of, or a complexity of two. Okay, complexity of two. Here we go. Hey, eight and a two. Nice. So you uh, you charge over. I'm going to say you'll need probably one more check to actually make it to the ship. Okay, okay. What skill would you like to, to use? You can only use one each skill one time, ideally, in a turn of combat. So it has to be something other than power. Then I guess as I'm approaching the ship, I'll probably use athletics more than power okay. just to get that final dash in over there. That's a D6. So that'll be a complexity of three right. to continue pushing yourself. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Two, three, and a four. Coming out very sequential. Okay. Yeah, so you, you managed to make it all the way to the ship. You dash with all of your slug effort there and get to the uh, the ship. Are you doing anything else once you, you make it to the ship? Yeah, I'm, go- I'm just going to essentially prep the engines, right? So it's a quick takeoff in case the uh, cat follows us once we got the guy on board. Okay. So I'll use engineering for that. Yeah, go for it. So this will be now a complexity of... Four. <laughs> okay, getting spicy. Yeah. There you go. Oh, okay, two, ten, seven, and four. Okay, so no doubles. No doubles. You manage to fire up the engines, and you talk to the temple, and he's like, oh, we're leaving in such a hurry. We just got here. Look here, Tin Man. All right, look, we got a laser cat coming in, but the pizza's also coming in, so as soon as the pizza's on, get ready to move your ass, <laughs> as he's, like, messing with a wrench or something. Uh, okay. As he's doing engine stuff. <laughs> yeah, whatever you say, boss man. We'll be ready to go. All right, and that's where I'm going to end the turn. All right, cool. Ger, ger tanks. Ger tanks is going to rise. Yes, absolutely. Ger tanks. Uh, excuse me. Uh, will be. Uh, I assume I'm just hanging out with the giant robot man because I did do the thing earlier. So yeah, you're definitely nearby. Right. You got this big laser beast who's looking pretty angry. Well, big laser beast. Looking angry, just got blown up. All I have is a laser sword, so I feel a bit like others do, and I feel a bit ill prepared to fight a laser beast with a laser sword. Mm. But fuck it, why not? <laughs> uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my athletics, okay. and I'm going to make a quick hop and a skip <laughs> to the top of Mr. Triage Man and take my position at the top of Triage Man's shoulder, and uh, that's all I'm going to do, I think. And just get up there. Your first roll is athletics then, so make an athletics roll complexity two. So whatever your dice is for that, you're rolling two of them. Okay, it's a die eight. Okay. I have two of those, and here they come. 
Yeah, hear that roll 20? This is what mm. real play sounds like. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I wake up for in the morning. Oh, it's a five and a seven. Yeah, so you deftly climb your way up to the shoulder of triage nine. You're there. What are you doing now? I think I'm going to go ahead and turn on my, uh, how would you call it? Personal shield generator. Nice. Yes. Put it on my personal shield generator and uh, pull out my sword and just sort of say, uh, all right, big robot man, you first. <laughs> I'm not sure what you mean. Please watch your footing. Yes, that's what I've done. That's my turn. I believe that's how <laughs> turns work. I'm just re- I'm ready for the guy to do the thing and then we'll see what happens. Okay. Yeah, so since his target is gone and he's been blown up. He's not able to do much. He leaps through the air, but uh, you guys have kind of interceded and prevented him from doing what he was trying to do. He comes out of this pounce with a, or come out of the uh, the stance with a pounce, but just sort of jumps between Triage Nine's legs and kind of lands on the other side of him. He does look up now, though. He kind of spins around. His eyes lock on Triage Nine and his mouth opens up and you can see like a laser energy starting to form there. You get the sense that he's about to blast up at Triage 9. So we're in a new round of combat now. Okay. He's declared his action of hurling lasers at you, Triage 9. What are you guys doing? Gertek, do you know if laser beasts of this variety are endangered creatures? You know, I don't believe, I mean, obviously they are, because they're on a planet that's about to be destroyed. So in that sense, I think we have free reign to kill as many as we want. <laughs> then I suggest that we get to killing. You know, I, I absolutely agree with you. I don't know why I became this British. I really did not tag this down. <laughs> That's okay. I worry for your neurological health, but we'll deal with that later. Well, you know, California sober. Anyway, <laughs> uh, continue. Sorry, sorry to bring that up out of no, nowhere. No, no, this is a perfectly valid question. We'd like to apologize to all of our listeners who are rocket engineers. <laughs> yeah, Brian, would you like to issue an apology for us? <laughs> <laughs> Not for this one. Rocket engineers can go fuck themselves. <laughs> I'm so proud of you, Brian. We've come, we've gone like a really long way with you. Like, no, fewer apologies... Go fuck yourself attitude. <laughs> no, this has nothing to do with fewer apologies for anyone else. This is just my personal <laughs> vendetta against rocket engineers. Okay. All right. I'll take it. Why do they have the job that everyone else compares to is like, this is the hardest thing in the world. <laughs> There's harder things than rocket science. Because they made the right choice when they went to college, Brian. That's why. <laughs> they did it in the 60s. How hard can it be? There's a really great sketch. I think it's, oh, I can't even remember who it is right offhand. We're like, oh, it's not rocket science. Oh, well, not brain surgery, is it? And it's just a, a rocket scientist and a neurosurgeon trying to outdo each other. <laughs> so brand is my safe spot.